Hello everyone! Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X! I am the Black Shadow, and uh, last time we uh, we journeyed back here to the um, to the arena, folks, uh, where we um, now having defeated the first of the Dark Aeons, uh, we're now at a state of play where, for us to take on realistically the remaining sort of uh, super bosses left in this game, we need to seriously improve our team. Um, now, as you can see here, I've already started addressing the uh, the status of um, breaking HP limits. Uh, I've only managed it with a couple characters so far, uh, being Kamari, who has got this uh, armor here, which is really good actually. That I'm still not too sure what I'm going to give him for his uh, his second or his last uh, ability. There, I might give him like death proof. So I, I, I might give him ribbon. I, I don't know. Um, I'm also working on it with Auron as well, who I've actually ended up getting two auto Phoenix um, Phoenix Bracers here. One with auto protect and one I, I gave him death proof um, because it might be handy. There are some enemies around that still like to deal death um, as a uh, you know as a, an attack, and it's more of that for um, for using fights in the arena. So I can put a break HP on those. Walker, as you already know, has already got his uh, his weapon completely done as well. So that's cool. Um, and so it's just a case now of um, getting hold of break HP limits um, for everyone else, along with a piece of armor that I want to use with them. Uh, and we will gradually get there as we go. Um, but that's going to take some time. However, the purposes of this video is not going to be concerning breaking the limits of our HP or MP. No, today we are going to be looking at uh, the, uh, the other side of the coin. The other side of the coin being maxing out our attributes. Now this is a very long and quite costly process, but it is pretty darn necessary if you want to take on some of the last enemies of the game. Uh, what we've got here is not bad by any stretch, but uh, truth be told, it could be a lot better. So, uh, what do you do, folks? Well, let, let's look at uh, how things stand. You know, As you can see, everyone here has got 99 sphere levels now. Uh, you know, we've gone around, we've pretty much uh, got hold of every sphere that's unlocked um, on the uh, the sphere grids of everyone. It's all done, it's all complete. So what we need to do is we need to look at improving our characters. Now, we've already done a tiny bit of this process already throughout the LP, and you might well have done so as well. And that is involving using some of these empty spheres. Now, uh... Um, I'm just going to put now here that um, depending on what version of this game you're playing, there are different types of sphere grids that you may use. I mean, this is the PS2 version. There's a a, a standard and an expert version. Um, I understand that the HD version of this game also has another version or two of this sphere grid. So uh, what the these grids will look like um, and the amount of spheres that they'll have and open spaces and that sort of thing. Are, um, are variable, um, so just bear that in mind as that may influence what your resulting uh, statistics are in, but the same concept still remains. Um, now, what you, we have been doing as we've been going through the game um, is we have been picking up a few of these sort of spheres here, um, you know, HP spheres, MP spheres, um, strength, defense, all these stat boosting spheres, which are very important. Uh, we've also gotten hold of a few of these as well, sort of little uh, moving around spheres, which are also handy in a pinch as well, and other bits and pieces like that. Um, now, uh, in any of the grids, um, we've already gotten hold of a few of these, um, where you'll find that there's places where the nodes are empty. You may um, remember back uh, where, uh, like uh, above Yuna's grid here, you've got where auto life is, and I came here, oh, I didn't uh, get it as a... Uh, I didn't get it as a lot of people. <laughs> I need to get those um, those points. I'll do that in a little bit. But yeah, like we came here and I went and just put down a whole load of um, nodes and while I was going around here. Um, simply because, you know, this was all open and free. You know, and it, it kind of needed doing. Bar these three, they need replacing as well, however, actually. And, you know, that that's all well and good. But uh, unfortunately, um, there's not many of these open nodes, in fact. In fact, um... Uh, in like this standard sphere grid that I've got here, there's about 800 nodes or something like that total, and there's only about a hundred of those um, start off empty. 
Now, obviously, if you want to be adding stats to uh, your characters, 100 nodes is not going to get you very far, when each one can only give you plus 4. Um, you know, I mean, you spread that out, you know, between 8 stats, that's what, like, say, 12 spheres each, so that's plus 50 to each stat, which is not going to get you hugely far. So, what other ways are there to go about this? Well, um, there is a very, very, um, useful and quite important thing that the game does allow you to get hold of eventually, and that comes from the arena. Now, once, uh, as you've been going along here, and we've been fighting, uh, some, um, around and capturing monsters, we've gradually been unlocking more and more of these enemies, apart this damn one here, but we'll get there later. But the important one is this guy, the Ultima Buster. Now, you can unlock this guy, um, by, uh, comp um, getting hold of five of each fiend in the game, which is quite a lot. Now, it's not Ultima Buster himself that's important, but it's conditions that revolve actually unlocking the Ultimate Buster. Because when you do unlock the Ultimate Buster, it unlocks something brand new for you in the Arena Shop. In particular, what it sells you, as I continuously choose the wrong menu, are these. Clear Spheres. These are crucial to maxing out your stats. Unfortunately, at 10 grand a piece, they're also very, very expensive. So let's let's buy let's buy a few. We just buy a few. We don't need a huge amount for the purpose of this video. Now, clear spheres um, are exactly what it says on the tin, folks. Um, you use a clear sphere, and what it does is it will empty a node from a grid. You might be starting to see where this is going. Um, what now? You know, so, uh, well, let, let, let's play around with it, folks, shall we? Let's take, um, I don't know. Let's go with, uh, ooh, who'd be a good place to start? Um, uh, yeah, we'll go with Oren here, for example. Now, um, next to Oren here is this Agility Plus 2, um, sphere, which is quite useful. Actually, no, let's not use Oren. Actually, that's a dreadful idea. Let's not do that, actually, because I need to think ahead here. Let's go with Titus here, for example. So, well, for a moment. Or Yuna. Yeah, we'll do Yuna. Okay, we'll do Yuna. Yeah, yeah, we'll do Yuna. So, um, we'll go with Yuna then. So, uh, yeah, you can see how well this has been planned. Um, so, yeah, so she is sitting on this uh, node here, maximum MP plus 20. That's all well and good. Now, the idea of the clear sphere is that you can clear spheres from the grid. You can clear any sort of node that you're sitting on or next to. Just the same process as, um, you know, as activate in the first place. Now, the whole point of using the clear spheres is that once you've got to this whole point of having maxed out your entire sphere grid, is that the only way that you're going to get better um, is not just by adding um, nodes to these empty spaces, which you can certainly do, um, and that'll give you, you know, it's a reasonable boost, but not, but you might want a bit more. The whole idea of the clear spheres is that you can look to uh, get rid of um, spheres that um, are not so effective and replace them with more effective ones. So let's take, um, all right, let, let's go ahead and let's actually go back to Auron here. So he's got this agility 2 um, uh, node which is here. Um, so what we can do and we might well want to do to max our stats out, is we may want to remove it. So we get our clear sphere, and let's remove it. And it will become an empty node. Now do note, as that, um, once you delete that agility plus two node, any character that um, had the, um, the benefit from that having activated has now lost that ability. So everyone's agility has just gone down by two. So do remember that as you're doing this process. But what we can do now that we've gotten rid of it, for example, is we can put in a better agility sphere. Agility plus four. And then what you can then do is get all your party and all your characters to then activate the new agility sphere. And it's a plus two net gain. However, everyone does need to re, um, recollect it again, which can be a problem. 
So, what you're basically tasked with, should you choose to accept it, is you're going to have to go, if you want to get the very maximum out of your characters, you are going to have to go through the entire sphere grid once again. And any time you come across any nodes which are not um, the maximum, be it HP, be it whatever you fancy, to remove them and replace them with a uh, one of your own spheres, because uh, the spheres that you'll get here always um, add the, the max amount. So a plus four for strength or whatever, MPs plus 40, HPs plus 300, that sort of thing, folks. And yes, it is a very, very long process. Fortunately, it's made easier by the fact that, remember, now that you've travelled across the grid, you can move four spaces in one sphere level. Which helps. It also means that at any point you can go, well, wherever you like. So, you know, luckily you can travel around pretty quickly. It's just a very long and expensive process. Not just for buying the clear spheres, um, but also of obtaining so many of these um, stat spheres. Because you can't buy them. You have to get hold of them um, through fighting. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Just a little side note as well, uh, as shown here with Tidus. Um, clear spheres cannot be used to remove ability spheres. Be it whatever type they are, whether it's a special or a skill or any kind of magic, folks. And, and I know you might be, you might have thought, well, you know, like with this black magic, we've got fire, we've got fire, girl. Why would I need fire, for example? So I think, oh, it's okay. It's it's ability. I don't need it. So let's just get rid of it. Um, it's not necessary. Uh, we'll remove it um, and free up for some uh, extra ability nodes. Unfortunately, the game uh, doesn't let you do that. Um, which, well, you can take it either way you fancy, folks. It's a bit of a pain, but uh, unfortunately, that's just how it is. Which reminds me, actually, Riku hasn't actually grabbed those, has she? Um, because I went past them and decided I wasn't going to activate them for some silly reason. Let's just quickly activate these. Because that's sticking out like a sore thumb. So, that's the general premise of what we're going to have to do. Now the question remains as to how best to actually do this. Because um, the problem is you could think, okay then, well then what we'll do, you know, is we can move our characters around, you know, I can add spheres here, I can remove them. But the problem is, is once you remove a sphere... Um, the ability, because everyone's activated every sphere, is that for like Wok uh, Kamari here, for example, um, you know, he could remove this strength 2 and make a strength 4. That's completely fine. His strength will go up by 2. But everyone else's is going to be down by 2 until you actually get everyone else to this point. So what you're going to do in the short term especially is you're going to completely ruin your characters. This is a problem. So... What's a good way of doing this? Now, now, admittedly, I've never done this myself um, physically. But, you know, you just use it. I would say, you know, start a little bit of common sense. So, uh, I've got Titus down here, for example. And what you're going to have to do, and you've got to remember that you've got to do, is you've got to plan out that you've got to travel all across the map once again. Which is going to take some time. And you want to make sure that as you're removing spheres, that all your characters are reactivating them. So I would argue, probably the easiest thing to do, to start with at least, is just have everyone on the same starting point. So we're going to use friend spheres to bring everyone to Titus' position. Apart from Yuna, because she's virtually there. So, you know, let's do that. Um, I could use... Uh, I could use my levels, but, you know, I've got plenty of these friends feeds. You can pick up these pretty easily um, from just fighting the Omega Ruins, which you should be doing anyways, because you're going to need the money um, from fighting the Mimics. I think it's like the um, the Curls, or whatever the hell they're called. Uh, they tend to drop these a lot. So let's just move everyone over to this point here, and it's going to get horrendously packed. Okay, so we've got everyone here. That's cool. So, basically, folks, everyone is just going to move in a big group. 
And it is as simple as that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, well, put down some starting spheres. Uh, so, uh, well, let's go with some strength. Because everyone always needs some strength. And some uh, magic defense, why not? And then all we're going to do is we're just going to activate them with every character. So we've done Titus. Yuna can move back down. I'm happy to use a sphere level for her to do that. And remember, folks, that um, although you've reset these spheres and they're clear, you can still travel between them for no cost because you've already made the connection. So that isn't actually uh, a worry. And basically, folks, that is all this is going to be. Um, it is, as I said, it is very time consuming. And it's going to be even more time consuming when you end up having to remove some of your, your already set spheres. Um, and replacing them with uh, other ones. Now, how you want to remove those and put them back is completely up to you. I mean, you can remove a an accuracy sphere and you don't have to put in accuracy. Again, you can put in, you know, um, agility if you want. You can put in luck. That might not be a bad idea, folks. So, we've done those. So, let's move Titus forward a bit. We've got two more here. Let's put down some more. So, let's put down some defense. And we'll put down uh, we'll put down an agility sphere because you can always use the more speed. The luck here is already a maximum uh, node, so we don't have to worry about that because I laid it down myself because it used to be a, a lot node, so it was always going to be clear. So we get Titus to activate them, and we'll just move Yuna not there ideally. So we'll just move Yuna forward a little bit and activate them again. Um, and it's simply, it's it's just a case of doing this, folks. It is, um, it isn't thrilling. Um, but unfortunately, that's, um, that's stat boosting for you. It never was thrilling. It never has been. It never will be. But uh, it's something you're just going to have to do. Um, however, of course, this can start causing some problems when... Uh, because the problem you'll have as well is actually um, deciding... How many spheres do you actually need to, uh, you know, to max out your character stats? I mean, you know, it's it's not easy to judge at times because, you know, it, it, it can be very tricky. So let's put everyone there. Look at that. Everyone's there. Isn't it beautiful? Like one big party. So how, I mean, so how many spheres are you actually going to need for everything? Well... Basically, you know, you, you can do a bit of rough maths for that. So let's let's have a look here. So, say you've got plus four um, for uh, each sphere you get. Now, bear in mind that every character has their own starting stats. So, um, Kamari innately has a little bit more strength than Tidus, who innately has a bit more agility than, say, uh, Auron or Lulu, who Lulu has more magic defense than Auron does. So... Not everyone is going to be exact like for like, but you can work out a rough maths. Say each character need, is going to need a boost at the max of 255, so say you need to look at about 240 um, stat boost to get something to get everyone to the max. So 240 divided by 4, you're going to need about 60 spheres of everything. Um, MP, luckily, you will not need many of because. Um, the, uh, the upgraded MP spheres are MP plus 40. You luckily will not need many of these. You're only going to need about 20 in total. Um, and that is not including the fact there are some of these MP spheres here anyway. Now, what you will find if you look around is there are a ton of these MP plus 20 spheres. You can replace... A lot of these as you go along. They're just simply not necessary. Um, you know, because once you've got about 20 MP plus 40 spheres, that's pretty much you're done anyways. And there's a lot more than these um, on the map than that. So to be fair, quite a lot of these MP spheres, you can then remove these and then uh, replace them with actual attribute spheres. Uh, which is another way of helping with the process and it kind of effectively think of a lot of them as clear spheres for you to add Because of course, you know, if you've got like a strength like a, 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 an attribute that's like a, a plus plus one obviously isn't gonna make much difference But if you've got something that's say a plus three already You're not gonna get a huge net gain, but you're still gonna have to do it um, And enhance it in order to get the maximum boost 
the big one that's going to take you a lot is HP spheres. Now, bear in mind that your maximum HP is 100,000, um, which is a hell of a lot. And unfortunately, a lot of these HP spheres um, are uh, 200s, which, when you compare it to what the, uh, the upgraded ones are, which is only 300, not a huge net gain. But again, it's something you're going to have to do. And in fact, what might be a, not a bad idea is to um, do is to sort of a lot of these MP spheres that we're going to be getting rid of. Perhaps put those for HP as you go along. Might not be a bad way. And trust me, you'll get a huge HP influx very, very quickly. Um, that does not take very long. And basically, it's just a case of just going through the grid again. It ain't pretty. But it's something you're just going to have to do. So you're going to have to travel around. You're going to have to know which spheres you do and do not need to get rid of. And you've also got to map out your path. And make sure that you don't leave any little spaces around. Because that can be really easy to do. So plan in advance. Make sure you're happy with the order you're going to take. But do remember, it's not a disaster if you do miss uh, a... Um, a segment of the grid because the fact is that because everyone's already traveled these paths you can get across pretty darn quickly and if you're that desperate there are other types of movement spheres to you available like returns and teleports and even warp spheres um, which can be used to expedite your process across so it's not a big worry but you will have to make sure you visit everywhere at least once again and it will take you some time, especially when you're starting off with 90-odd levels. So uh, be sure to be um, prepared for an hour or so. So that's the process, basically. Um, however, there is one thing that I, I did mention about. And that is, well, two things. First of all, getting hold of all these clear spheres. Now, as I said, these things, oh for goodness, these things are expensive. Um, you know, 10 grand a pop, that's a heck of a lot of money. So if I want to max out on these, that's a million gil to buy 100 of these. Or 90, um, yeah, 100 is a million gil. You're going to need a lot more than 100 of these. Um, I mean, even the, the grid I've got, I'm probably going to need about four to 500 of these. I would, well, maybe, maybe not that much, but at least three, 400 I would expect. So that's three to four million gil that you're going to need to raise. Um, and as I have mentioned in earlier videos, good way of doing that is certainly uh, going to the Omega Ruins, fighting Mimics. Make sure you've got Riku with her with her Gillianaire ability or anything with Gillianaire. It's just that um, Riku's God Hand automatically has it. Fight the Mimics, kill them, make sure she's in the party when you do, and you net 100k for each one. Pretty, pretty um, good way to get hold of money. You can also fight enemies in the arenas, and some of the tougher ones will drop some pretty expensive equipment as well. That can also help supplement your income as well, but I would certainly suggest go to Mega Ruins, fight Mimics is the good way to go. Now, the only other problem that you're going to have, which I did mention, is actually getting hold of these stat-boosting spheres. Because you have to remember... You can't buy these anywhere. They are not for sale. Now, there are some bosses that we've taken on where we can pick up some... Uh, we've been able to pick up some of these as loot. We've come across some chests throughout the game which have had these um, available inside. But ultimately, you're going to need a lot more than that. And once again, this is where we come back to the arena. The arena is how you get your characters to become gods. It just takes a lot of time. I mean, look at the I mean, look at the time that the, the remember the save file we've got to take on the end of the game was about 115 hours, about 191 in Shrapnel. And I've still got a way to go. Uh, we've st I've still got a few hours to put in before uh, my party is really ready to go um, for the last bits and pieces. Um, so it's time consuming, yes. But there's easy ways of getting about it. And, and I've already gone over easy ways to get off the sphere of, so don't worry about that. Um, so the only other thing that you've got to look at is actually, as I said, getting hold of all these spheres. And the arena is the way to go. Fortunately, you can get hold of all of these spheres as loot 
from taking on particular enemies in the arena, folks. And I'm going to show you where to get them. Um, now, to be fair, as my party as it is, the majority of these are pretty damn easy. Um, some are still a bit of a problem, mind you, and they're, they're pretty tough. But generally speaking, at this stage, you should be able to take them all on, if not trounce some of them. Um, but if you're looking to do this a bit earlier with a party that's not this strong, bear in mind some of these enemies are going to give you some problems. So uh, I'm going to try and help you out. Even against enemies that I could like hit, kill in three or four hits, I'll give you ideas if you're not as advanced as ways to... If you want to do this earlier on, um, there are tricks and little bits and pieces that you can use. So let's go get fighting. So the first thing we're going to look at is... Um, and I've, I've written this all up on the back of an envelope, so I, I left myself plenty of space, of course. Um, the first thing we're going to be looking at is getting hold of M HP spheres, uh, which you're going to need a heck of a lot of these. Um, you think, you know, a um, hundred of them is only 30,000 health, um, and our characters are up 22, so you're going to need about 200 of these at least, if not more. Depends if you're using any HP plus X percent abilities, but... Come the end of the game, you're going to need those slots of something else. So, we are going to be wanting to take on the Ironclad. Um, who, and to unlock this guy, just so you know, you've got to have captured 10 Iron Giants in the Thunder Plains and 10 Geminis, um, which you can find um, in the Inside Sin dungeon as well as in the Omega Ruins. So, let's take him on. Uh, be warned, though, this guy has 2 million health. And some pretty nasty attacks for that matter as well. So please be careful of that. Okay then. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is let's get haste onto Titus. So he's ready to go to be a nice support character. Because he's only got one MP cost with his weapon. Uh, Mighty Guard might not be a bad idea actually. Get some shell, um, shells and protects going. That would be handy. It saves me having to do it. So, and actually, I'm also going to cast Regen here on Auron because he is going to be, like in a lot of these sort of ironclad, sort of iron giant fights, it's handy having a tank to deal with these guys. So, let's get going. Of course, this guy um, is heavily armoured and he will counter-attack. This is a problem. Um, and that was attacking with a piercing weapon. Celestia weapons, even they do get um, um, limited uh, in effectiveness, so that is also a problem. So that should be okay. Who did I cast Regen on? Did I cast? I did cast it on, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I just couldn't see anything. So whatever. Anyways, so well, let's try and take this guy on. What can I steal from him, by the way? I'm just curious. Seven out tablet, very nice. But yeah, he'll respond with this uh, Rapegi. Um, attack, which if your rage is good enough, is easy enough to uh, to deal with. But again, problem is he is uh, pretty darn resistant to damage, especially if you don't have any celestial weapons. This is a problem. Let's just um, I'm gonna have to get um, him sentling here. Don't know why I could have just got Kamari to do that. Everyone's got sentling now. Everyone's got everything. God damn it. Anyways, uh, this guy does have a few attacks as well up his sleeve. Um, he. Uh, he does have some um, pretty pretty vicious attacks, so be careful of that. And again, like always, he has a habit of attack of targeting um, the uh, the guy with the most health with some attacks. Um, fortunately to this guy, and this is very useful if you haven't got upgraded weapons, he is vulnerable to um, armor break. However, he's like 95% of resistant. But like any enemy that's resistant to armor break and is but he's vulnerable but resistant to it. Um, well. Oh, gosh. I failed. Wow. That's what I get for talking. A fully upgraded Banishing Blade will always hit um, all the breaks. Um, you can also use Frag Grenades as well. Uh, they inflict Armor Break 100% of the time as well. So there is that. Well, thank you. Aren't you a gem walker? Of course, uh, Attack Krills are also a pretty good way to go as well, if you fancy. Um, if you need it. Finally, one of these hit. Yeah, I'd say our party is pretty, pretty good to go and with protect as well. We should be um, more than capable of taking this guy on. 
But, you know, with 2 million health, you know, that's a pretty fair amount. So it's just got to be a bit careful of that. It can be a problem. Shall we, shall we put this guy out of his misery? Yeah, let's put him out of his misery. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, it's not. It's less about how much damage you do, because generally you're going to be doing max. It's about just hitting him enough times. It's a bit weird, but, you know, that's the way it is. Oh, I should have used armor break. Oops. I forgot that is going to be highly protective against. Ow. That's a problem. Never mind. Oh, goodness sakes. Do I have a frag grenade? Please tell me I've got a frag grenade somewhere. I do. Thank goodness. So it doesn't do any damage. Did the game just get really loud? The game, I think it just got really loud. That was weird. Never mind. Anyways. So now he's, um, his armor is completely gone. So we can just slaughter the guy. There we go. Lovely. But yeah, Rap, uh, Rap Heggy um, is pretty damn dangerous if your party is not huge and powerful. I mean, I know we've only got about like, 20,000 health. That hurts like a bitch. It also does MP damage. Yes, folks. Start getting used to MP damage. You're going to be seeing this more and more as this LP goes. It sucks. So be careful of that because that can really screw you over. You can use, if you're that desperate, um, if you have like some two or three stars, um, twin stars or three stars, they'll reduce MP cost to zero, so that it, um, gets around having no MP. Because some enemies will start doing MP damage. Uh, Penance, for example, loves doing that to you, which can be a real problem. Ow! But eventually, we'll get through this guy. Eventually, we'll get through this guy. Give me it. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes it just takes a little time. <laughs> There's something about Yuna hitting this guy for max damage. It just, I just find it amusing. To be fair, her strength is higher than most other characters in the game at the moment, which is really bizarre. She's higher than Titus. There we go. The guy's dead. And with a bit of AP, which is fine. Oh, I hate it when they do that. Unfortunately, when you do fight all these guys, there is a 1 in 8 chance that they will drop some Dark Matter. Now, admittedly, Dark Matter is very useful. You know, you can use it for putting on Break Damage Limit on weapons, and also putting it onto Ribbon for your armors. But ultimately, that's not what we're after. We want the, uh, the HP spheres, but unfortunately... That does happen sometimes, so inevitably you're going to be doing more fights than you bargain. But believe me, he does drop HP spheres. And so, in fact, I will fight him again off screen and I'll show you that he does. So give me two seconds. Where is he? There he is. Two seconds. Damn, I hate the MP attack. Ugh. That sucks. Anyways. There you go. HP spheres. There you go. I, I just feel it. Well, I, with the power of editing, I can show you guys anything. So, hey. But there you go. So there's some HP spheres for us. So that's that's wonderful. So let's just restore our event ring. Um, now, you will need... Um, so HP spheres, you're going to need an absolute ton of those. Just so you know. Nothing you can do about it, really. Okay, so next up is uh, MP spheres. Now, luckily, you're not going to need many. And in fact, I've probably got enough here as it is. Um, but I'll still show you the fight where you can get that. So let's just re, um, redo everyone's uh, MPs and stuff there. So um, to, take, to get MP spheres, you need to take on Vidatus, um, which is the species conquest here. Um, you can look up. I'm not going to say what all the... Uh, 
criteria for unlocking these guys are, you know, you've got the internet. I know you've got the internet because you're watching this, so don't even try lying. Um, now, this guy's only got 90,000 health. However, you'll see the immediate problem. This guy's got um, constant null, um, null on him, and it is constant, um, which is a problem. Um, so, you know, if you want to try and use any kind of magic, it just simply is not going to work. Um, his his uh, evasion typically is also pretty high, um, so if your party's not exceptionally great, you're often going to miss. Like that. Thank you, Warren, for failing at the right time. I had a heart attack there for. Now he'll hit it. But, um, yeah, so um, that can be a problem as well. Um, so... You know, what do you do? Well, he, although he's got a null orb, doesn't mean he's immune to everything. You can still use some magic attacks, uh, for example. Um, he's still vulnerable to, like, a uh, holy, for example, if you want to use that. So, we'll have him holy. I have no idea how much damage this is going to do. Not much. Well, that was a bit disappointing, actually. Because uh, he's got a magic booster on as well. And again, the fact this guy has got, um, you know, the fact he's got um, constant uh, null, and the fact he's got regen is a problem. So, easy way around it, just hit him with something that's going to not miss. I can overdrive! You can, all overdrives never miss, so you're pretty good. Unfortunately, his physical defense himself is actually not too bad. Uh, but, you know, you get the idea. You know, if I had the um, oh, uh, upgraded Clad Bolt, this would be easier. Oh, hello, Riku! Wow! It's the first time this LP that Lulu hasn't thrown the ball! I was hoping to be able to show other characters. I'm, I'm really glad that's worked. That's cool. So, yeah, as I say, just use things that don't miss. I mean, you can even use, if you want to, um, use items. You know, because items don't miss. Uh, it's impossible for them to. Um, even if you want to throw, like, uh, a Shining Gem or Supreme Gem or whatever. You know, they all work as well. Um, I, Flare should work as well, I'm pretty sure. Ultima probably works. And just throw magic at him. Uh, none of the metal magic is pretty good to go. Although he's still pretty resistant to it. Um, but again, you know, there's a variety of ways to go. He does use Osmos on you a lot, so be careful of that. He can also throw Ultima at you as well. Um, but once your party's pretty powerful... You know, it's, it's not that difficult. But I figured I'd show him off. And luckily, you don't need to fight him very much, which is fine. Also, interesting little tidbit. You can steal lightning gems off that guy. And that might be handy for you. Because you might be, like, trying to get hold of some, um, like, equipment. That's, like, uh, um, like what um, Yuna's got here. Like, trying to get um, equipment that absorbs elements. Lightning gems are really, really hard to get hold of. Easiest way is to get them with the darts. You can steal them at four at a time, which is pretty good. Lovely. Right, so let's start tackling some of the stat boosts then. So let's go down the list. So first up we're going to do is strength. And fight to do strengths, we've got to take on the Juggernaut, who is also in the Species Conquest. You'll find a lot of the enemies are after our Species Conquest. Not all of them, mind you. Right, okay then. So, much like uh, the um, the Ironclad, uh, this guy um, fortunately doesn't counter-attack. However, um, he can be quite resistant to attacks. Even if you've got piercing, they will still sometimes struggle to do max damage, as you can see. But just like last time, you can use... Um, if you want to, you can use, like... Uh, uh, break attacks, um, like um, Auron's Banishing Blade or Frag Grenades. This guy is vulnerable to armor, but I think he's got like a 99% resistance or something. So basically, you've got to use an item to get past that. Or be really, really lucky. Um, so that's that's fine. In fact, um, you can also use magic against them as well, but... Well... Yeah, that. Don't bother. So, we're just going to have to hack this guy down. Nothing we can do. 
Thank goodness for auto haste. Thank goodness for, you know, auto everything. Um, yeah, that's what you should always be doing. Get your haste on. Get protects. Get all your protection. Treat them like boss fights because a lot of these are. I mean, this guy has got, you know, 1.2 million health, which is pretty shabby. Not shabby. Not bad at all. Um, now there, this guy is charging up for a... Uh, in fact, i tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to show this guy off just briefly because he's an important one. Actually, no, I'm not. And he's got, like, um, the attack there that he's charging up there um, to use, like, a fire. Um, now, it's quite powerful attack. However, fortunately, it is actually still a fire attack. So you can use Null Blaze, um, and that will... Um, mean that you don't have to worry about it, so you can just um, get past and you won't die. Um, I really have got bad characters on for this. Let's try this again. Uh, yeah, we'll get really quick, why not? Get another normal blaze going. Um, he has got some, his physical attacks are pretty powerful. Um, he also does have an attack um, which can cause instant death. Um, so please be careful of that. It's like Crush Spine, I think it's called. That can cause instant death, so please try not to let that land on you. It's quite powerful. But again, at this point, you know, when you, especially when you're looking at this, a lot of these enemies are pretty, pretty much pushovers. A lot of them. Not all of them. A lot. There's some Strength Spheres there. Lovely. Next up, Defense. Back to your Species Conquest. This one, you want to take on the Tank. Much like the Juggernaut, this guy also, you need piercing weapons to do any kind of reasonable amount of damage. Or, of course, the old Celestial weapons. Uh, he's only got 900,000 damage, which is pretty fine. His moves as well aren't particularly quick, which is fortunate. And again, at this point, generally speaking, you can probably kill him before he gets attacked. you got to be careful of him hitting, though. Um, all his attacks, the, um, if he hits you... Um, they have delay on them. They can also um, cause berserk as well. Um, and this guy can be pretty damn dangerous um, if you're not prepared for it. Just don't let him get an attack off and you should be alright. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't do too much. Just like the, the Star Wars uh, guys during the main game. Just if he starts hitting you and starts causing berserk and that, um, then that's a problem. Don't let that happen and you will be okay. And some Defense Spheres. Beautiful. Next up, Magic Spheres. Now, this one is a bit of a problem. Um, there's a couple of these where they're quite hard to get. This is one of them, and that is Magic Spheres. For this, we need to go and take on the Jumbo Flare. Let me just quickly get some water. Sorry about that, folks. Just, uh, I needed to get some water there. When you're talking for like 30, 40 minutes straight, it starts to kill your voice at times. Uh, and I've been busy today as well, so that hasn't helped. Um, anyway, so, uh, this guy, the Jumbo Flan. Now, this guy is pretty darn dangerous. Uh, 1.3 million health. However, there's a lot of problems. First of all, that. This guy is immune to physical damage. This is a huge problem. So you think, well, oh, shit, okay then, well, what should we do then? Uh, I know, we'll use some magic! Magic, that sounds like a wonderful plan! Uh-oh! Yeah. This guy also has auto-reflect on him. This is another problem, you're starting to see the problem. Immune to physical damage, auto-reflect, yeah. You got a huge problem here, folks. Um, he also does absorb all the elements um, as well. I don't think he absorbs holy, mind you, but this guy is a reflex. So, what do we do? You know, well, this guy you've got to take on a bit differently. And it's one of the few times in the game where the reflect spell is actually reasonably useful. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cast reflect onto Walker. And we'll just heal up. Uh, actually, no, let's, call, let's quickly cast haste on you. Here this. There we are. And we'll heal her up. So, what's the way around this? Well, the best way to deal with an enemy that's got Aura Reflect, Aura Reflect one of your own party, and bounce spells off of him. Because the spell itself 
can't be constantly reflected back. And we can do damage to him like that, that's fine. But remember, this guy's got 1.5, 1.3 million health. You know, that's quite a lot. So let's just quickly haste um, Lou here as well. Because, you know, we've, we, we could do with the, uh, we could do with the MP. Unfortunately as well, because of that, you got to remember as well that you, some spells like Ultima, you can't reflect that. Um, it doesn't work. So, you know, we can do this and that works a bit. You know, we're doing some damage. That's not too bad. But it's only going to get you so far. You have to remember. You know, and it's pretty time consuming and it's pretty awkward. And if the person that you're casting, uh, you know, the, the reflect spells dies, you've got a problem and that sort of thing. Though the system does work. Also, this guy loves using Ultima. Oh, I need that. Ultima hurts. Even if your party's pretty good, that hurts plenty. The fact that Lou's got auto shell, so that's really good. So, you can see, especially if your party is not as strong as this, you've got a huge problem. You, you can't do a huge amount of damage, and you're just taking too much. Luckily, there is a very useful way of defeating this guy. And I did, and when I first read about this, I didn't even think it would work, because it didn't seem right, but it does, to be fair. It involves summoning, uh, which a couple of these fights, summoning is very useful for, mind you. Not all of them, but it is. What we're going to do is we are going to come and summon Anima. Because she is ridiculously overpowered on the best of days. Now, the thing is, is that, um, so what we're going to do here, first of all, like always, is we're going to cast haste on Anima here. Now, let's look at the Jumbo Flan. It's immune to physical damage, that's fine. So if we, you know, attack normally, not going to work. So why have I cast Anima? You know, I mean, you know, I can use bounce magical attacks, that's all well and good. The reason that I've, you want to use Anima is because of the pain attack. Now, the attack, um, the normal attack acts like a physical attack. Pain is magical damage. That is where this works. Pain, um, not only does it act as a magical attack, so it ignores the Jumbo Flan's physical defense, it also ignores Reflect, because it's a skill that causes magical damage. So it ignores the Reflect in the first place. The magical damage ignores the physical defense. So you can hit this guy for full damage. That is how you take on Jumbo Flan. It's still a bit time consuming, yes. But it's a lot faster than any other method. And of course, if you get hold of, like, say, you know, um, I don't know if Oblivion, uh, Anima's Overdrive works. It might do, or it might not. I don't know. But it's the way, it's the best way of getting past um, the Auto Reflect and the immune to physical damage. Is Anima's Pain spell is the way to go. And of course, Pain doesn't use any MP, so you can use it as much as you fan as much as you fancy. It does work. And just keep using it and using it, you know. If if you're if you're um you're finding your animals take a lot of damage, you can keep using pain attacks and like, you know, if you have to shield to just protect yourself against like it using Ultima or something or flare, then you can do that, you know. If you're that worried that you're gonna take a huge amount of damage, then that's fine. Heal yourself up as necessary. That's all well and good. But it's honestly, folks, best way to go about it is just pain it to death. And for that matter, Anima is also a very useful Aeon to have for quite a few of the uh, arena fights. Um, not just for stat building, but some of the actual, um, like the original creations, having Anima is pretty handy to have. Just as a, uh, you know, if, if all hell breaks loose sort of thing. You know, if you just need to get a breather or something, might not be a bad idea. So, just keep going. I mean, unfortunately, when you use pain, it is a quite a lengthy attack rank, so you won't get as many attacks in per per uh, 
round, if you will, uh, between uh, the Jumbo Flans attacks. But, you know, at this point, I could easily survive its attacks. If you're worried as well, you can always cast Shell on Anima as well, which I have not done because I don't need to. But, you know, you might well need to. And eventually, we'll get there. Eventually, we'll get there. It's a bit time-consuming, yes, but isn't that what leveling is all about, folks? When you've got to the power leveling section of RPGs, isn't that what it's all about? Doing the same repetitive thing <laughs> over and over again. It shouldn't, but these old-school RPGs, it was always, always like that. And those of us that were there can certainly attest to it. You just... You jerk! He just... He just cast Reflect on me! And started trying to heal itself. Wow. Never mind. Anyways, it's dead. And we get some magic tears, which is really good. One of the more time-consuming fights we'll be doing, but, uh, you know, it's just part of the game. Right, so we've done strength, we've done defense, we've done magic, so next up, magic defense. We'll go with that. This one's a lot quicker, don't worry. We're going to be taking on the One-Eye, again, Species Conquest. Now, the One-Eye only has 150,000 uh, health, which is pretty good. Um... You'll be careful, though. Um, also, to be fair, he also can drop weapons with triple AP, which are A, very valuable, and B, very handy for getting hold of sphere levels. So, just remember that. Um, now, this guy um, is immune to a lot of elements. Um, he also has a lot of attacks. Uh, all his attacks will cause loads of status effects, like confusion, poison, curse. Lots of really annoying things. It's a bit of a problem, folks. My advice, just kill him. Don't even give him a chance to attack. I'm going to even get the Onion Knight to finish this off. His evasion isn't that high, so you should be able to land the blows. Just don't let him attack you, because if he starts attacking, he's going to cause an absolute mess of your party. So just don't give him a chance. Just kill him. Told you it was quicker. Uh, next up, let's do um, let's do Agility next um, with uh, Fenrir here. Again, Species Conquest. Famous in the PS2 version, you could actually fight this guy and it didn't cost you a penny due to a glitch. Thank goodness that missed. Now, Fenrir has 850,000 health. He's also got very, very high agility, which means hitting him is very difficult, even for Walker, and his accuracy is pretty darn good. Um, well, pretty good compared to everyone else's, plus with his luck. So, problem. Um, now, this guy has three Fang attacks. Um, you have a normal one, which can cause confusion. Fangs of Chaos, I think it is. I can't remember the names, but you got Fangs of Chaos. Um, you got Fangs of Hell, and you got Fangs of something else. One will attack you for a little bit of damage, but causes confusion. One of them will attack you and deal 15 sixteenths of your current HP's health. So, Yuna would do, it would do 15 sixteenths of that. Walker would do 15, 16s of whatever he's got at this point. So basically, it just cripple you. And that is very hard to protect against. He also has an instant death attack, which ignores defenses. Like ribbons, like being an Aeon. It completely overrides that. It ignores any death protections that you have. So that's a problem as well. Um, so easy way to deal with this guy. Again, either focus. Also, his agility is really quick as well, which is a problem. So, again, good way of getting rid of this guy would be certainly to focus on attacks that, say, can't miss. So, say, like, yeah, see, Fangs of Chaos, that causes confusion. That's a problem. You've got Fangs of Hell, which I think is the instant death attack. I could be wrong. Let's quickly solve that. There we go. Um, one not bad idea is to use, um, you can use your aim abilities to increase your accuracy. You can also use um, Jinx to lower the enemy's luck. 
Um, that can certainly be done as well, because lowering the enemy's luck lowers his chances of um, avoiding attacks. So that can make a bit of a difference. But general good way to go about it, um, if your party seems to be missing a lot, is again just focus on attacks that um, you know that that will hit. Whether it, um, generally speaking, just limit breaks. And the great thing as well, obviously, once your um, party is like access to all the spheres, is everyone's got access to entrust. So you can just keep giving Walker overdrive gauges, and he can just basically just keep um, attack reading this guy, and he'll just. Like so. Because, yeah, 850,000 health, when they've got that kind of evasion, that is a real problem. Let's be careful of that. There's our agility spheres, very nice. Uh, next up, uh, we'll do accuracy. Um, accuracy, we need to take on Hornet. Again, spe um, species um, conquest y thing. Hornets have 620,000 health. Um, they can also attack you and, again, cause lots of status effects. Um, however, fortunately, this guy is not too hard to hit, so it's just a case of just doing enough damage to him quickly enough, basically. Don't let him get any attacks off if you can help it. I'll, I'll show one off because I'm feeling generous. Yeah. He can also, again, cause death attacks which ignore protections, which is a problem. So, uh, yeah, try, um, again, try and kill this guy, um, before he kills you. But he's not too bad. Actually, spheres, very nice. Not many left. Um, the last, uh, two stat boosts, um, the first one we do is evasion. It's the last standard, um, stat boosting sphere. Um, and we need to take on the, uh, the Pterix, or the, uh, the, yeah, the Pterix. Pterix, don't know. Anyways. He's only got 100,000 health, fortunately, um, and he's not too bad. His evasion's not great. He has got auto regen, just so you know, if you're, um, taking this on as a lesser equipped party. So that could be a problem. Um, and all of his attacks cause really strong delay, so be careful. His evasion's not bad, but generally speaking, you'll land it. But yeah, please, please, please be careful of this guy's really strong delay cause. But I'll show you, actually. I'll show you how strong the delay is. So that's everyone there. And assuming this hits, causes curse as well. And he can also attack more than one character as well in a row, which is really annoying. Yeah, please be careful. And, yeah, that does cause some delays, so please... It wasn't easy to notice, but it does, believe me. But luckily, he's he's pretty easy. There's our base and spheres. Beautiful. Let's just quickly heal our party here briefly. So, lastly, so we've got hold of um, the stats. So, strength, defense, magic, magic, defense, agility, evasion, and accuracy. Now, the last one to um, to get hold of is luck. Now, luck, you've got to remember, is slightly different to all the other three. Um, all the normal stats you get are upgraded with power, mana, and speed spheres. Now, unfortunately, luck can only be um, upgraded with fortune spheres, and fortune spheres only. And as you can see, unfortunately, everyone's luck stat is very low because there are not many luck nodes on the grid. Resultantly... Luck spheres are going to be one of the ones you're going to need to invest in a lot, and especially fortune spheres. You think if we need, say, a hundred uh, luck spheres, for example, uh, that's yeah, that's that's an excessive. Let's say, how many luck spheres are we going to need? Maybe fifty. That's two hundred luck for everyone, for example. So say you need fifty luck spheres. Remember, every character's got to activate that, so you're going to need 350 Fortune Spheres. That's a lot of fights. Um, so, that is a problem. So, um, Luck and Fortune Spheres are going to be two that you're going to be investing in heavily. Now, in the last video, um, we took on the Great Sphere, um, you might remember, uh, because... He's quite useful for fighting to get hold of, um, I'll quickly show it again, I won't take long for this. 
But this guy's quite good at getting hold of um, Auto Phoenix armor. Um, so we took on this guy with his one half million health. Um, but I showed you generally how to fight him. He does have some elemental um, changes and stuff. But basically, just, you know, overdrive him to death. You just need to be careful of his um, hydraulic press, which will do 15 sixteenths of uh, your maximum HP, which is a problem. Um, so please, 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 please be careful with that. Um, and he'll also, any normal attack you'll do on him, he'll respond with Ultima, which is a huge problem as well. And it is quite a time-consuming fight, unfortunately. There's nothing you can do about that. It's just the, uh, the nature of the game. I was tempted to make a Triple H joke there, but I won't. So, you know, that's a bit of annoyance, but, you know, it is what it is. So, in, there is, so you can just do that and just build up your party with Shell and Haste and that, and just keep attacking this guy. There's another way you can go about this, and that, once again, is Anima. It's always Anima, folks. It always has been. It always will be. Anima, when uh, she's quite, you know, reasonably upgraded, like she is at the moment, is pretty, pretty good for taking on uh, the Greatest Sphere, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and cast Haste on her. And let's shield. Now, the problem, actually, no, let's use Protect, actually. We'll need Protect. Protect does um, protect um, half the damage to Hydraulic Press, so instead of 15 16 it would do just under a half. Which is a problem still, but hey ho. Fortunately, this guy is vulnerable to oblivion. The only thing you've got to be careful of when you take um, when you use oblivion against the greatest sphere, um, the greatest sphere will always respond to a um, a overdrive with a counter-attacking hydraulic press. Also, because you're using an Aeon, they'll also then get their next turn. So you've just got to make sure that you can survive two hydraulic presses in a row. And the way to do that is just protect yourself. Because then you can just about survive two hydraulic presses in a row. So just be careful of that. So we can attack the um, Greatest Sphere normally. We'll get Ultimate back, but it's not particularly powerful against um, a pretty, pretty buffed up um, Aeon. It'll do a few thousand damage, it's not bad. So we'll just use Kiraga. And basically, the Hydraulic Press does so much damage, and because it's fractional damage, um, it's not a case of as your Aeons get more powerful, you, the Overdrive bit will go up less and less because you take taking less damage. Fractional damage is fractional damage, um, and it will fractionally increase your Overdrive bit, so that won't change. So you can use this 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 tactic and pretty much, you know, it'll work any time. Just make sure you're fully healed before you use Oblivion, or whatever Overdrive it is you're using, for whatever Aeon, Oblivion is the one to go for. And as long as you've got Protect, you can survive two consecutive Hydraulic Presses, you're fine. And it's probably, it's actually a quicker way of doing this as well than actually with Pipe Members. This is probably the fastest way to take this guy on. So you see here, normally I die, but because I've got two Protects, I can just about survive. And a third Oblivion will do the job, I'm not even going to heal. It's dead. 1.5 million health, so... Goodbye. Also, always make sure you overkill these enemies, um, otherwise you only get one of the sphere you're after. And make sure you overkill it to make sure you get two. Even if you end up getting Dark Matter accidentally, you know, it's still fine. But always, always, if you can, make sure you overkill them, and all of these enemies, the overkill, is 99999 damage, the 100,000 max damage mark. Must hit him with that for the final blow or more, um, so just remember that. So there's our Lux Spears, very nice. Right, so now we've got hold of our, uh, our Lux Spears. Now what we're going to need is a sugar ton of Fortune Spheres, and there's only one way we can get hold of these reliably. And that, once again, is the Arena. And just like in the, um, for the Lux Spheres, we've got to go to the Originals. The Greatest Sphere gives you, um, the Lux Spheres. Fortune Spheres comes from the enemy before that, the Earth Eater. Be warned, do not take this guy on 
unless your party is pretty damn good. He will murder you. Uh, he's resemblant of the Chocobated. Now, there is a immediate problem with taking this guy on. Let's just get Reekwin for this, for example. And here we go. So, let's hit him. Now, luckily, he's not protected. However, Megaton Punch. Instant death. That is his counter-attack. He will use that a absurd amount. Um, I didn't want to take this guy over yet. Let me. I'm going to restart this. I, I should carry on, but I want to demonstrate this guy a bit first. Um, now, just like when we took on the Chocobo Eater, after you do a certain amount of damage to this guy, uh, he will go on his back. But I want to show off more of this guy beforehand. Oh, hello. Um, if you want to, you could try using magic against him, but it's not a good idea. As I will now demonstrate. I'm just going to use Fire Rough for this. Because this guy has constant auto reflect. Can't do anything about it, so don't bother. You have to use physical attacks. Um, you, you could use the reflect strategy that we used earlier against the Jumbo Flan. But it's not really necessary, truth be told. But you must be careful when he uses Megaton Punch. Because sometimes this guy will use it more than once in a row. He could use it twice. He has been known to use it three times in a row. Please be careful. So that's that. But however, once you do enough damage to this guy... Um, I think it's like 150,000 or something like that. I, I don't know. But eventually, hit this guy, he'll go on his back. Now, um, what this will happen now is uh, this guy will still counterattack you when you hit him. However, what he'll do is he'll cast Flare on himself, which will hit a random party member. And generally speaking, it's going to do 9999 damage unless you've got some protections. In which case. Yeah, might get away with it. Should we see if we can get away with it, folks? I think we should. Okay, so let's use Shell. Only problem, of course, with using Shell is that you've got the problem of... Uh, it does reduce the effectiveness of your um, your magic. Uh, healing magic, so just be careful. That. So let's Shell, everyone. Um, let's use Karaga on Riku, which I should have done first. And let's see if we can survive this. Still 9999 damage. Thankfully though, that damage is capped. He cannot do more than 9999 damage with, with um, Flare. So, as long if you've got characters that like Waka, like Kamari, that have broken the HP limit and have got more than that, you're guaranteed to survive. This is quite important. Everyone else, however, are pretty, pretty screwed. Even Lulu won't survive. She's got auto shell. So, that's not too bad. However, of course, there is then the problem of... Okay, then, well, what if my, char uh, my characters haven't broken the HP limit yet? Because that's entirely possible. And especially if you want to get hold of some Fortune Spheres early, because they're so rare... There's only one thing you can do, and that again is resulting to summoning. So let's do that. Man, I need that water. I'm not going to be able to speak by the end of this. We're nearly done. So, just like normal, again, make sure to use haste. Protect isn't a bad idea as well, actually. So there is that. So we'll use Protect as well. Very good. And the great thing about using Aeons is that Aeons automatically break the HP limit. So by the time you're looking to do this, just make sure an Aeon has got more than 9999 health and you're fine. Um, and just remember to break, well actually, so to break the HP limit with characters, just make sure you've got the um, appropriate um, uh, Celestial Weapon that's powered up. Again, look that up on the net. I'm, I've tackled that in previous videos as well. Um, in our Celestial Video video, I talked about that. So deal with it there. But as long as your Aeon's got more than 9999 health, you can survive the Flare counter-attack. And also, by taking the counter-attack, it also boosts up your um, you know, your overdrive gauge. That's a well and good. There we go. 
Eventually, after two or three rounds, uh, the Earth Eater will get back up. So, just go to normal. Use physical attacks or pain or whatever. Um, thankfully, um, uh, the Megaton Punch uh, does not ignore death defenses, and Aeon's are automatically immune to death. Um, so, that's fine. You'll just take a lot of physical damage, um, and just as a note, the Megaton Punch does break the damage limit, can do up to 50, 60,000 damage if your party's not prepared. So please be careful with that. So just again, like normal, just hit him down. But generally you'll find that Flare, unle um, the, uh, the normal physical attack here for Anima especially, um, generally is not going to do max damage to, um, to this guy. Pain generally does, um, but uh, unfortunately takes longer to use. But Oblivion's pretty good as well. So, use that. And unfortunately as well, if you want to like max out your lax luck stat, you are going to be fighting this guy oh, 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 well over 100 times. Possibly the best part of 200 times you'll take this guy on. That is a problem. So please, 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 please... Uh, make sure that whatever strategy you want to use against this guy, just make sure that you've ironed it down, you're pretty happy, um, and, you know, you're ready to go, basically. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you can use Anima. If you want to, you could use the... Uh, the Major Sisters aren't actually too bad either. I know I haven't showed them much off in this LP. I really need to. Um, but the Major Sisters aren't too bad, actually. Um, the, uh, because, uh, one of them, like, has, um, uh, Mindy, I think it is, has a Sado attack, uh, which hits multiple times, and is really, really powerful, uh, does huge amounts of gam damage against the Earth Eater folks, so, that's a pretty good way to go, um, if you're interested. But, yeah, taking on, at, um, the Earth Eater in this method... Uh, is probably the safest way to go. Um, but it's probably not the quickest. But uh, having Anima on haste to protect with lots of healing power is probably the safest way to take on the Earth Eater. And eventually, eventually, you'll get the job done. 50,000 AP as well for each time you beat this guy. That's nice. And... There are your fortune shears. But as I said, be prepared to fight this guy a lot. But fortunately, he can drop um, equipment that's really, really valuable as well, actually. He can drop stuff um, with some really rare abil abilities that sell for a lot of money. So that you can actually earn a profit fighting this guy. Let's have a look at just some of the equipment I've picked up from fighting in this one. So, Argonaut there, 15 grand, makes up for that fight. Uh, makes it, makes it, and you can see these are pretty good, and you earn a profit in the end from just selling these if you don't need them, which is really good. Look at that Mirage boost, look at that, 64 grand. Orn's never going to use it. Um, so, you know, that's pretty good, good as well, Strength Blade, Ogre Blade there. Look at this, I got this off of the, um, look at that, that came off of the, um, the Greater Sphere, 112 grand. That is making a huge profit, folks. So, you never have to worry about running out of money taking on this guy. And it can surrogately also add to your coffers a little bit. So, when you need to um, go ahead and eventually you'll need to buy more clear spheres, for example. So, uh, it's a way of easing the pain that you'll take from that. But, it's still a very expensive journey. And it will take you some time. It won't take you very long to go around the sphere grid. You'd be surprised how quickly you can go ahead and through this. And it's not hard to get the sphere levels, courtesy of the Don Tomberry glitch. But still, it's going to take um, a bit of patience, a bit of persistence. Um, it's certainly going to take a few days gathering all the spheres, you know, like using all the fortune spheres and then having to fight uh, the Earth Eater again, because you can only get them two at a time as well, which is a real problem. Um, so it's going to take you some time. It's going to take you a couple hours at least just to max out your fortune spheres again. So unfortunately, there's no quick way of doing this, but 
if if you are interested in taking on and beating a couple of the enemies at the very end of the game, a couple of the super bosses, it's just something you're probably going to have to invest in. And there's no way around it. But anyways, that's going to be enough for me for this video. Um, I hope any of you guys that have watched this um, uh, found it useful or interesting. If you've got any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Um, I do read them, will respond. Do not worry about that. Um, ask a question, you'll get an answer. Ask a silly question, you'll get a silly answer, etc., etc. So, um, thank you much for watching and listening. I've been the Black Shadow. Um, I wish you all the luck in your endeavours um, in leveling up your characters to as powerful as you need them to be. Um, and hopefully I will catch you next time in the LP, um, uh, where, uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing is just, um, I'm just going to make sure to get hold of Broken, everyone's HP, and then we are going to be making a trip to Xanakund, where I have got a certain Suncrest to pick up, but unfortunately, we've got a Dark Aeon to get through to get that. So thank you much for li watching and listening this long video, and thank you for your patience, and I will see you next time. Ta-ta, and good luck.